Um, so what we first do is, uh, for example, we have uh, two tubers, and um, the the weight of the two tubers is around 1,100 gram. So our aim is to produce uh, like 450 gram of uh, fresh yam, so that we can steam it and uh, pound. So we are we we hope that by the time we cut this into size uh, we'll have enough for for the experiment so what we first do is uh, we divide we have two tubers so we divide them into two equal parts each of the tubers so we cut this this way So we pick one half of this tuber and the other half of this tuber and keep it for the second replicate. So with this first replicate, we have to remove the proximal and the distal part of the yam. So we cut off the proximal because we don't have too much sample, we just cut a little away. So after this, we cut them into <clears throat> uh, average distance of two centimeter. So we have about two centimeter each. Uh, Okay, so then we peel, we peel off the back as lightly as possible so that we have enough sample. So we've done the peeling, we've done the peeling and uh, it's a bit dirty so we have to clean the, <coughs> the, the fresh yam. So the discoloration is just the property of the yam itself. It's not. It's not that it is bad. It's just the nature of the yam. It's just to get the soil and the, the other fragments away. So I have to blot this just to remove the moisture just a little bit. And then we dice them into approximately two centimeter cube sizes, cubes. So this is already small, so we just cut it into two. These are small. So, but for the big one, we have to find a way to cut it into two, approximately two centimeter cubes. So, because, because we don't have uh, very big tubers, we cannot uh, determine what part we pick the dry matter from. So we pick it randomly, as you will see. But first, let's see what amount of yam, fresh yam, we're able to get from this. So normally we need like 450 grams or 400 grams, but we don't have as much as that. So we have just about uh, 310.53 grams. So I need one for dry matter 
randomly I pick one so this is 298.19 I prepare some for dry matter This is the pounding machine. Uh, if you see, there is a receptacle inside, and we need 250 mils of water to pour in the receptacle. So we pour in 250 mils of water. Tap water? Yeah, tap water. And uh, we place the cup over it. And we place the stirrer and uh, pour in our sample. If we know the mass already, and uh, cover it up and start the steaming. So while we are waiting for the steaming to to be completed, we have other things to do like preparing the calibration of the analyzer and to calibrate the texture analyzer first you select the program that we want so I have selected my program I call it uh, kefir dough glute and gluten extensibility pounded yam so it's the same program so I load the program to exponent and I want to do the calibration so first we go for the calibration of uh, the force and uh, already the texture analyzer has been on for more than one hour just to keep it uh, prepared to boot it well and uh, now i can calibrate for force and note that we have a five kilogram load cell which is spectacular and ideal for this uh, measurement so i <clears throat> calibrate uh, five gram kilogram follow and I calibrate the five kilogram load cell with a two kilogram standard mass as you can see so I place this on the calibration platform and uh, check that everything is okay and then we can click next so it's calibrating currently and now calibration is complete i can terminate the calibration and check calibration to see if we are going to have 2,000 grams uh, the standard mass it's okay okay so we have uh, 1,999.8 grams .9. okay that's good so this is okay Calibration for force is complete and then we do the calibration for the distance uh, which is here uh, the return distance I set is 40 40 millimeter and the speed is 10 millimeter per second and contact force is 5 grams and um, the platform is already set so that the probe will touch the baseline uh, for the calibration. So if I click OK. To make the zero point. Yeah, to make the zero point.
okay height calibration successful this is the TA settings we are using uh, yeah. Let me just check this. Five grams again. Okay, and then the test configuration. If you look at the test configuration, the kind of probe we selected is exactly the same probe with uh, what we have on the TA. This is the Kefar Do Gluten Extensibility Rig, which is the same here. So I have to now name my sample so to 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 check if it if uh, it's correct look at the uh, ta <coughs> run a test and you see the name is already there and it's going to save in the right folder okay so we have to prepare the the mold the kefir mold before measurement and we have to do that by lubricating it so we take out the top form mold and the base mold and then we can lubricate it uh, with paraffin yeah. oil We can lubricate it with paraffin oil. Apply the paraffin oil generously so that you have enough. Make sure you lubricate all the grooves, the mold grooves. What is important? This is so that your sample does not stick to the to the mold when you want to remove it and also to to make sure that you have regular size of strands okay and uh, the top mold is also going to be mold the top form is also going to be lubricated, lubricated and placed on the on the base mold so that when your sample is there it can preserve the temperature of your sample so the mold is ready and then we wait for the boiled the steam sample to be ready before we pound it so normally the steaming using this particular machine pounding machine should uh, steam for a total of 23 minutes so i'm waiting for the alarm if the alarm does not come before 23 minutes i will stop the steaming at 23 minutes afterwards I take the mass of the steamed yam and then I pound it and also take the mass of the pounded yam. 23 minutes is done. So it took 23 minutes, 6 seconds to, to steam. And then for me to, to take the mass of the steamed yam, I have to open the machine. It's hot, be careful. Yeah. Um, and I have to drain the water away. So already I know the mass of the container and the stirrer inside. So I just uh, take the total mass here. Six nine five point seven two. Six nine five point seven two. Okay. And since I need some samples for dry matter, I can take one two, one cube, one cube. Randomly. Randomly. Uh, take the mass of the cube. It's about 14.78 so I note that 14.78 okay that will be for dry matter Look. 
So we have to make sure the receptacle is clean. There is no water. So you remove all the water because during pounding, we we can have some samples fall into the into the machine. So now I fix this. I fix the blade. And then I start pounding, noting the time. So we start pounding now. So when you hear this, you have to stop and make sure you put them together again. Because it is a latter, it's more difficult to pound. So you have to keep gathering the sample together. Okay, so we have to stop the pounding for now. It's it's difficult to continue. Two minutes, five to three seconds. And we have to take the mass of the pounded yam. For dry matter. So I do the dry matter for the pounded yam. I weigh the empty can, I note the mass, and then I, I put the, the sample. I try to flat it so that it dries very fast during drying. So I take the weight of the sample plus can, and then and for the second one, I do it in duplicates. So. This is the second one. Two point four three nine nine. So the sample mass should be around ten to twelve grams. So This is like 12 grams, 14.284. So, what we now do is uh, we take some samples for the texture. texture analysis, approximately about 50 to 60 grams. So, by experience, we know that. With uh, something like this, we can have 50 to 60 grams. So you roll it into a ball mass and check the temperature. Normally, if if uh, the pounding was okay, we should have a temperature of like 45, but I'm sure the temperature is, Lower. is quite low now. So, and it's a bit sticky. <clears throat> so we check the temperature. It's 34, so it's quite low, but we use it that way because we can't do anything about that now. So, once it's ready, you place it on the lower form, the base form, and use the top form to press it into shape. And then you cut off the excess pounded yam from the sides. And you put in the press. And press on it. And press. Just a few seconds and then we can start measurement. 
if we if we let it stay too long the extensibility will start decreasing at a very fast rate the ones i measured after 15 minutes i mean after 30 minutes of uh, 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 relaxation the, the extensibility was only 50 percent of the relax the one without relaxation so that's why it's important to do the extensibility now you dip the spatula in paraffin oil pick out the sample and uh, place on the sample holder and then you can run the test so this is how the extensogram looks the extension profile we can see the peak force here. We can see the extensibility is from the peak force, the distance to the peak force, and the area under that is the extensogram area.